for those of you who want to send an offering to our church, you can mail it to San Jose Bible Baptist Church, P.O. Box 97. I just want to talk real fast and get over with, but I got to talk slow in case this is first timers. Some of you can just parrot after me. <laughs> Please mail it to San Jose Bible Baptist Church, P.O. Box 97, Santa Clara, California, 95050. I know when you look us up online, the tendency is to mail it to Lafayette Street. Please do not mail anything over there. Please mail it to the P.O. Box. And then if you prefer paying it through online, that'll be easier. Go to www.bbcenglish.org. Click on that and the front page, it'll show a donation button. Click on that one, you'll find our ministry to support. Uh, please do not ask us to keep track of all the receipts and everything because we only keep account for the people in our church and we get tons of emails, phone calls, and so many people contacting us. So this is just a little bit too much for our ministry. So uh, if you want something to keep track of how you give, usually if you do it online, it should keep track for you. Blowout funds is still ongoing and Lord willing, it'll probably be a really big one. All right, but... Uh, I still have some men in my mind, and then we have a few, few big surprises. We do know Pastor Kevin Griffin and Dr. Mike Caesar have to come because of their ticket, and I'm sure that uh, they know that they'll have to come too because then we <laughs> pay good money for that. So we'll see what will happen. All right, then, I would like to ask Brother Jared to open up the offering with a word of prayer, please. Mighty God, uh, just thank you, Lord, for uh, just this congregation, Lord, and uh, just everyone here, Lord, and taking their time. And just thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord. And I know 2021 uh, may be a lot tougher, Lord. Who knows? But uh, we need you, Lord. We need your mighty hand, Lord, and, uh, just to keep us going, Lord. And uh, just pray, Lord, for the filling spirit for our pastor today, Lord. Uh, give him the words to say, Lord. And uh, just bless this offering. And uh, that we can better uh, help these missionaries and our church, Lord, for your glory, not for our own, Lord. Judges chapter 16, please. Judges chapter 16 and verse 15. The story is about a man named Samson who had superhuman abilities, and he was long before Hercules and the modern world conjured up the idea of Superman. Superman, right here, you can see in the passage, he was able to kill a thousand. Uh, with just the jawbone of a donkey. Amen. And no one could conquer him. He was unbeatable. But he had a weak spot. And because of that weak spot, that's the reason why he fell apart. Every Superman has his kryptonite. Let's look at Judges chapter 16, verse 15. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass when she pressed him, pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this month, for he had showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she, she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. 
And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. I believe the problem with a lot of us today is that we are not looking at our weak spots. Usually I strongly believe that the source of all of our unhappiness and the sufferings that we go through and the problems that we have in life is that we don't discover our own weaknesses. And the devil, we do know that he does take advantage of our Achilles heel somewhere. And he's going to pay attention, keep track, and find something where he will hit you. But I don't think that we know the specifics behind it. I think that's the right word. This is going to be a complicated sermon. So I hope that you'll especially pay attention and try to understand where I'm getting at because I'm going to dig through a lot of the unconscious things that we actually go through. And the unconscious things that we usually go through is actually our flesh. Psychologists, they give it a term, you know, libido and stuff like that. But we know what it is before the psychologists came up with their three ideas with ego, super ego, and libido. It is body, soul, and spirit. We already knew that a long, long time ago. But I'm not going to get into that. The point is I want to dig into that. The fleshly stuff that we don't keep track of. And hopefully it will be eye-opening and helpful to you. The title of my message today is Superman Has a Weak Spot. Let's pray. Amen. Father God, fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit. Wash away my sins with your holy blood. Uh, I need you to guide my tongue. Make the sermon understandable, comprehensible, very clear. And convict each and every person, no matter the age and the gender and the nationality and the lack of understanding, open up their understanding, Heavenly Father. You have to be our ultimate guide and teacher and not me. Make today's preaching change people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, my first point is verse 17 through 18. Verses 17 through 18. My first point is the disregarding Superman. The disregarding Superman. So our Superman here, there's something that he totally disregards and that he revealed all the secret of his strength, his kryptonite, to the woman who's actually after his life. And that is extremely dangerous. But he disregarded that. He didn't care. Verse 17, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this month, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. So one thing to understand from this passage is that Samson, he totally disregarded about his life being in danger and just revealed all his secret. And I think that's the problem is that we give way to our flesh, we give way to sin, we give way to the devil, because remember, the devil is trying to find an Achilles heel in you. So what he's trying to do is find that weak spot. And a lot of times you reveal it without really paying attention to it. Yeah. You disregard it. I think the best way to explain it where we can totally understand, uh, I believe is starting from this point, is we look at the cause of our problems. So I think that would uh, be the great starting point. I know that if I give a testimony of myself over here, it greatly, I can explain better because I understand what I went through. So, in the Christian walk that I went through, obviously, it's not easy pastoring a church in the Bay Area. And it's not easy living a single life, and it's not e easy to serve God in your youth. And especially when you're going to a liberal, one of the worst liberal colleges ever. So, it is not easy. And I went through a lot of pressure and hard times, and I had to, like, grit my teeth. And I had to learn to be patient and understanding with members because with enough problems that I'm going through, the tendency is where you kind of put the blame on the members, right? Mm -hmm. And that is actually very dangerous as a pastor. It is true that members, they are at fault, but the job of a pastor is to understand that they're babes. Mm -hmm. 
And babes, you can't just keep blaming a baby when the baby's crying, right? You got to be understanding, gentle, and caring. And the Lord pulled me through that. The Lord also pulled me through to uh, withstand the heavy schedules that I went through in school and in church. And then not only that, it's not just all these problems, but the devil suddenly throwing in attacks where you never thought that it would happen. Now, as I start to look more and more into the core of myself, you know, the tendency is to obviously think that, oh, this is just a trial that I'm going through, or these are suffering and pains that I just have to put up with. But then I started to look deeper into myself, and I started to realize, and I've said this in previous sermons, so you might understand. You'd be surprised that the majority of the times of the problems that occur is not because things just happen or that you just blame it on the devil. It's because of you. You are the problem. You can actually make your life better. You can actually be more happy. You can actually make the suffering easier. But the problem is, is that we don't look at ourselves. Let me give a good example. A good example is health issues. And because there are people with genuine health issues, they can't come to church, they can't come to soul winning, they can't be active for the Lord, correct? And that's something we don't blame those people on, obviously, because, look, if a person has breathing issues, for example, then especially at this time and age that we're going through, not a good idea for the person to come to church if they're going through like really heavy breathing issues. I know we had a member in our church who went through a COPD and PTSD and all the other letters of the alphabet. But it's because of the health issue they can't serve God, right? But see, that's the danger. The danger is, is that it's easy to attribute to our health issue. They're not looking back 30 years ago. Is it because of all the smoking they did? And the drugs they abused their body with? And because of that, be sure your sin will find you out, and then 30 years later you suffer that. And that's why you can't be active for the Lord. A lot of times it's easy, isn't it, to attribute uh, the fault to things that just happened that cannot be taken care of. But we don't think back and, wait, could this be because of me in some way? Usually if you look at the root cause of your suffering and really contemplate, did I do something that caused this to happen? And you look back, you're going to go, yeah. Some of you know what I'm talking about if you're suffering some health issues and you look back in your life and you know you're reaping what you've sown. Right. Talk about financial issues. You know, we're struggling financially. In this Bay Area, you got every excuse in the world. This is nuts, man. You're all still crazy for living here. I'm still crazy for pastoring a church here. I think we should all just quit San Jose Bible Baptist Church, <laughs> move to someplace like Texas or something like that. But there's a lot more land, you know, and we'll finally have ourselves a nice building or something like that. So financial issues, we're all struggling. We're trying to make ends meet. But then a lot of times we have to look at ourselves and say, I wonder why we're financially struggling. Is it because of me? Maybe I'm not managing my schedule as I should have. And I got to get off of that screen for a moment. I've spent too much time on that one. Or uh, I've, because we're struggling financially, I'm not using wisdom or praying to the Lord about it. So sometimes the problem happens because you didn't even pray because you're too lazy to even pray about a problem you're going through. Uh, we go through uh, church issues and family issues. Sometimes fights can stir up all of a sudden. And then, you know, it's easy as a pastor to attribute the things as the devil just brought up an attack to ruin the church. And it's easy to think that as a family person as well. But sometimes if you look at the root cause, you got to go, is this something of me? Here's a good example. Would the fight between two ch church members would have started if the pastor may have been more wise about it ahead of time and maybe made sure that both parties felt satisfied with what they're going through? Okay, okay. Ever thought about that way? Maybe the church member doesn't come to church anymore and complains and whines, and yeah, maybe they're fleshly, they got issues, but maybe is it because of my fault, really? I can't attribute to any of my fault in any single way or form where I fail to follow up with the person. I fail to pray for the person. Maybe if I followed up, maybe if I prayed, that problem may not have happened. 
Maybe that would have happened with a family situation, parents having trouble with their children, and uh, spouses having trouble with fellow spouses, and especially children, which is really bad, children having problems with their own family. And the only way that can motivate them to come to church, which is very difficult, is probably a bus ministry or fellow uh, children who go to church. So I don't especially envy, envy th those positions. But those people have to ask themselves, why did these problems occur in my family? Is it, can it be attributed truly to me? Did I, uh, maybe I didn't pray for them. Maybe I didn't seek the Lord for help on this one. Maybe there's something of my own issues that I neglected and ignored that I couldn't have helped out the situation. When I started to, you know how my church improved? This is a very important keynote. And this happens in any suffering. Why does the Lord put us through something, uh, through suffering? Because he wants to clean out all the dross at 1 Peter 1. And then that trial, that suffering is over when you, you, not the situation, not the other person, but you are perfected and that dross is cleaned out. I thought I had all my dross cleaned out. But after 10 years in the ministry, the Lord finally showed me how much I improved. I mean, if I look my, at the pastoring that I did 10 years ago, I wouldn't do it the same way. I changed so much. I improved so much. Why? Because it was through suffering the Lord taught me more. Humi uh, he humbled me, made me more aware of them, some things to improve upon and to do better. Am I starting to make sense? Amen. I hope this makes sense with these examples. That will be helpful. Now, here's a second thought that I want to bring up that will be helpful to you. A second thing that I want to add on top to the cause of our problems and sufferings is obviously something we did wrong ourselves, right? Now, the Bible says, for all have sinned, and it defined the definition for you, and come short of the glory of God. Now, what does that mean? That means that we've sinned, and sin is defined when you fall perfect of God's standard. Now, the reason why Satan finds weaknesses in us and then causes a suffering later on where we don't even expect it. A good example was a health issue, right? The health issue example that I brought up. Like, who would have known that the person would think that 30 years later sin would catch up and then cause such a heavy consequence, correct? So, things like that happen. But in order for the person not to make that mistake, and to forget and to disregard and ignore his or her own problem or issue and forget it years later, 30 years later, is to realize that they check themselves every day in their sin. Now, according to this verse, this verse will be very helpful to make you see your weak spots. Pastor, I don't know my weak spots. Well, this verse will help you. It says basically you fall short of God's standard. That's, that's defining sin. So let me ask you this question, all right? How many, uh, don't raise your hands, all right? Well, you can all raise your hands. I don't care, all right? But how many of you have sinned today, all right? So every, how many of you, here's the next question. How many of you, this might be more eye-opening, how many of you have not sinned today? Now, a lot of us are going to laugh, right, and say, of course I've sinned, Pastor. But you're not thinking, what did you sin in? Good. Then you discover your weakness, don't you? Mm -hmm. Then you realize what you fall short of. See, sometimes we think that, you know, oh, I've, uh, I've got all my weaknesses out the window. No, but if you start to think more seriously, then you shouldn't have sin today if you got rid of your weaknesses, right? Mm -hmm. You should have sin. You should be good people by now. You did not sin today. Congratulations. Come on, let's be honest. We know we sin today. But you can't just think like that. Why did you sin today? Isn't it your job to be holy for I am holy, saith the Lord? Isn't our job to correct those sins? Now let's total these two together. Ready? If you are to think about what you sin today then, right? You discover your weaknesses, isn't it? I should have done this more. I neglected to do this. That thought came up. Why did I think that thought? I should fix that. My heart felt this way, and I know that wasn't right with God. I should fix that. If you finally start to pay attention to those things and not disregard them, right, like you've done every day, you start to disregard them. You aren't paying attention to those weak spots, like Samson. But if you start to pay attention to, okay, what did I sin today? 
Why is it that today I cannot honestly say I did not sin today? Why is it honestly today I cannot say I did not sin today? Come on. We know we've sinned. Let's be honest. I've sinned too. And then when you start to think that, then you find your weaknesses where you sin. And then you can ask yourself this. I wonder if the devil saw those weaknesses before I thought of them. And then he had a plan set up for this trial to happen, this attack to happen, this suffering to happen, because here's this weak spot. The devil knew my weakness. The devil knew one of my weaknesses was where uh, if I get bombarded and I can't handle things. And then, you know, with the blowout events where we were setting things up, and then because of what happened that November that I went through, as you might know, and then the coronavirus situation, all this happening at once. See, the devil discovered my weakness. And he said, Gene is not prepared for this. Gene, I know he sometimes fumble at this. So then he took advantage of that. And then it was through God's grace that I'm able to overcome it and see that, learn from it, and do it better next time, right? Amen. So then, you have to look at the cause of what you're going through right now. Everyone is going through a problem and suffering. I know that. Uh, if not everyone, most people are. We all got a blessing from uh, the special about your anchor holes. That was such a huge mm -hmm. blessing because you're going through a personal problem, issue. There's something that's fearful to you. Well, you have to ask yourself this. Is your weakness, something in your weak area contributing to that? The dangerous thing is, as in uh, verse 17, when we read that over here, Samson said, it says in verse 17 that he told her all his heart. That's risky. Why would he do that? You know what you've been doing every single day? Some of you don't realize this. Some of you are just in plain sight, revealing every day to the devil your weaknesses. I mean, if there's a time you skip Bible reading or prayer, that you just expose your weakness to the devil and he's, and then he gets his minions set up for that one. A time where you lacked self-control and you couldn't refrain yourself and then you just let it out in your flesh. The devil saw that and he says, oh, okay, so we're going to keep track of this one. See, you got to realize that every single day that you go through, sin is not private to you, not even in your thought life. The devils, they attack inside your mind. And you've got to realize that all these things you just pretty much laid out every day. You thought that, uh, as long as I don't do this in church, I'm okay. No, in the privacy of your own home and everything, it's laid out. And you lay out all your heart to the minions of hell, and they see your weak spots. And you don't think that after you live it, if they see that, all these weaknesses you commit, what, 10 times a day at the very least? In one day? And then two days pass by, three days, four days, weeks, they don't see a repetitive pattern. And they see a repetitive pattern of the things that you constantly do in your weakness. And you, you don't think, you don't think the minions of hell are going to bring that up later on. To attack you. Good preaching. You know how confident they are that they can use that attack on you and you will fall? You know how confident they are? Look at verse 18, the last part. The Philistines knew. They knew Samson revealed all of his weakness. They were so confident that they took the last part of the verse said, then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. They knew that Samson, he was going to become weak. They brought the money. They said, this is going to work. You got to be careful. If you don't fix your weaknesses, if you don't discover your weaknesses, you're disregarding the weaknesses. You need to discover your weaknesses. Until you discover your weaknesses, you better get ready and you've got to start discovering them and fix them because the enemy already has the money in his hand and they're like playing a bet game that I know that so-and-so in the church is going to fall into that mistake because I saw a repetitive pattern for the past 10 years of what they're weak to and prone to, so I know this attack is going to work. We can't disregard. I mean, as much as we want to disregard and not think about it, that's the problem. If you don't want to think about it, you're like Samson. You're disregarding it. You have to think about it. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Because the devils of hell, they're thinking about it. And when they think about it, they're going to use it on you. 
And that's why it's so important that you need to think about it so that you can overcome them, so that you don't get distressed, you don't get discouraged, you don't live in ruin and ruin. I mean, some of you who are going through a suffering and problem right now could have been solved a long time ago if you start to discover your weaknesses and overcome them. Amen. Look at second point, verse 15 through 16. Second point, verse 15 through 16 is the distressed Superman. <coughs> the distressed Superman. Pastor, um, you just went backwards. You started at 17, 18. Why are you going backwards? Because there's a reason at verse 17 why Samson disregarded what Delilah would say and just revealed all his secret. There's a reason. The reason is verse 15 through 16. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death. Verse 17, that's why he revealed all his secret. The reason why you keep committing the same weaknesses that you commit over and over again is because of distress. It's because of grief. When you use, uh, when grief is used as an excuse, it blinds you from your own weakness. Let me repeat that again. When grief is in the play, it blinds you from looking at your own weakness. Let me give it a good example. A good example is, okay, so why couldn't you come to church today? And then you say, oh, it's because the natural number one thing, right? Work, right? That's the natural number one thing. Work is the distress. And the game card that the devil used where it might prevent us from coming to church that day, right? Well, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So notice over here that because of that grief, it becomes understandable on why we would uh, not be able to come to church. And the devil saw that weakness. And he says, oh, all I have to do is amp up the hours. If I amp up the hours, that person won't come to church anymore. Watch. Now, am I starting to make a little bit of sense? Basically, the point is this. Satan, what he does, where it makes us disregard our weaknesses. Maybe the real issue is that... The reason why you couldn't come to church, sure, it's because of work, but maybe the real issue is, is that you're just fleshly. That's it. Now, look, don't get me wrong. I know that there are some people that uh, work 24-7, and there are people who are going through uh, health issues, and there are good, legitimate reasons why people cannot come to church. Uh, let me go back to the first point. A lot of us go through family issues. A lot of us go through painful issues. A lot of us go through health issues, especially economic financial issues or spiritual issues. A lot of it, us are going through that, so it's all understandable, and I totally understand. And if I was in your shoes, I'd probably do much worse. And I'm not saying that you're sinning either. A lot of times you may not be sinning when these bad things happen or you can't come to a soul winning event or to a church event, etc. Okay? But in this sermon, I, I don't want to mention about all that. That has to be out the window right now. All right? I don't want to mention that because what I want to try is to dig deep and I wonder, I wonder if it's because of a fleshly reason. That's more of the reason why you couldn't fulfill the task for the Lord. Why the suffering occurred. I want to expose that. You say, why do you want to expose it? Because I believe that uh, we've disregarded far too long about that. And we used, we used every grief available to cover up our reasons why we couldn't do the thing for the Lord. And by using these griefs, it cloaks and makes us ignore and makes us disregard our real issue. Maybe it's because you're just flesh. Good preaching. Maybe you're just flesh. Maybe you're the problem. And you know what? I know you need to hear that because I need to hear that. I need to hear that because if I don't realize that, then I'm going to live a life constantly being bombarded by problem after problem after problem, years of problem when I could have solved it 20 years ago. 
You know what I do whenever I go through an attack or suffering? Usually the first question people do is, why God, right? That happens. When you do why God, here's good advice. Good advice is to think about what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I do that. Now, when I start doing that, then I start to think about, oh, maybe because I failed to do this, and I can see why that suffering happened because I failed to do that. Another good thing is to think about uh, why the distress happened is because maybe the Lord, he's just testing you on something. But why is he testing you? Did you ever ask yourself that? Because he knows there's a weakness in you, a dross in you that needs to be strengthened. So it's not that you're sinning, all right? It's not that you committed a sin, that's why the bad thing happened. It's because there's a weakness in you that the Lord knows you need to work on this a little more, child. And he allows the test to happen. Amen. But think about it. If those weaknesses were fixed out, fixed off, then God wouldn't have to send the problem. Or if the problem happened and we fixed our weaknesses, we would have easily overcome the problem, solved the problem faster. Amen. So I know this is a complicated sermon, but I hope it's eye-opening to you. I hope it's helping you. So we got to realize that we got to look at our weaknesses. It's so important. It's, we've disregarded it. We've been in ignorance. But the, the enemies, they've been in play and they've known our weaknesses far too long and they keep using that on us. And we need to overcome those weaknesses through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and under his precious holy blood. We need to overcome those things. Don't let the grief be your excuse unless the Holy Spirit gives you peace of mind and says that, uh, that this is not an issue you need to fix. But you can't think like that first. You can't think that when you go through a problem that you can't just automatically think that nothing is my fault. No, you got to think about is it my fault first. And then when you look at your fault first, then if there's no issue and you have peace about it with the Lord, then move on. That's it. Don't stay in that thought, oh, my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault, and then you get so discouraged and depressed. Then the devil used that against you as your weakness. That's right. Yeah, with discouragement, depression, and all that. You just need to encourage yourself. That's your weakness. But the point is this. The point is, is that you have to keep, uh, you can't just disregard so easily. You have to at least ask yourself, what is it that I need to work on, Lord? I do that in my suffering. Lord, why did this happen? Are you teaching me something? And when I do that, I see it, and then I fix it. And then usually the next time when I preach a sermon on that, it becomes very powerful. But if I didn't fix it, the next time I preach the sermon, it would not have had a powerful effect. A lot of time it's easy to concentrate on the grief and to say that this is, no, 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 this is more of the important issue. If this job, let me bring up that job example again. That's a very good example because that's the common reason why people can't come to church as much. Because of this job, it's just too many hours. It's just draining my energy and stuff like that. If this thing was solved and taken care of, that's the issue, Pastor. It's not because of my laziness. It's not because I'm fleshly. It's not because I don't want to come to church. It's because of this job. That's the main issue. I think that's very dangerous as well. The reason why that's very dangerous is because you're not considering your weakness. If you did consider your weakness, nothing's your fault, good, move on. But if, there is, uh, if you don't consider your weakness and believe that's the main issue, job, if job was fixed and I can serve God, think about this. The devil is going to give you a different attack then on the same weakness that you had. Oh, so job's the issue? Let's solve it. God answered the prayer, and guess what? Some of those church members, when job situation gets solved, they still don't come to church. Yeah. You know why? Because it really wasn't the job. It wasn't the grief that caused them to do that. It's because they were fleshly truly. Yeah. You know, it's so easy to put the blame on an event or a different person, but like the song goes, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me oh lord yeah that happens you know what improved my family relationship and my church relationship this might be helpful to you what improved my relationship with people and with church and my family is when we do conversations i always consider the side of what i'm wrong at 
because it's so easy to look at the other side of what they're wrong about. But when I look at my side on what I'm wrong about, guess what happens? Even if that other side don't fix their issue, the relationship does get better. You might say, why? Because maybe the Lord wants to fix you. And that person, the Lord gave up on that person. That's good. Or the event that happened. That helped me so much where, I mean, uh, for some of you who don't know my father, he's a very different man, all right? <laughs> he's very controversial too because he came from the White Tiger Army. And, dude, those guys, I mean, they were brutal. I mean, they, they, they took no survivors. They killed everyone at the Vietnam War, okay? Because they couldn't trust uh, anybody who might be innocent. Because in the Vietnam War, for some of you who don't know, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. You couldn't trust anybody. The Korean White Tiger Army, they didn't care. They just slaughtered everybody like that. So my dad is a totally different mindset from me. I don't know how I was born from that man. <laughs> I still don't know. All right? So my, the way I do ministry is very different from how he does the ministry. Now, you might, uh, but some people might go, how is it that you're able to have fellowship with your father and even sometimes a good relationship? Me and my dad, we joke quite often, actually, compared to other Korean families that don't do it as much. But the key reason why is because what helped me immensely, despite of our different characters, and some of you don't know this, but sometimes we, me and him would have a fight that's almost like the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm serious, like, 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 it's in danger mode of we'll never speak to each other again. That sometimes happens. Hard to believe, right? But it does happen. I don't act pious. All right, some of you, some of you have that. All right, I know some of you have that in your family tree. Okay, don't act. You're all spiritual. All right, I had to say that to rescue myself. All right, so, so sometimes these things happen. But what helped me so much was to stop putting the blame on my father and start to look at myself. And when I do that, you'd be surprised. Sometimes then my father would even correct himself after that. All right. So that's, so in order to, you can't let the grief, the distress be your excuse. You need to figure that out. And that's the first point. In order not to fall into the disregarding mode and let grief blind you, make you disregard your weakness, then how do I do it, Pastor? You're aware. That's so important. The first point is you're aware. Notice that Samson, he was not aware. All, he's, uh, all, his, all he felt was being vexed unto death at verse 16. The majority problem of people is that they feel the grief, and that's why they think and concentrate on the grief rather than their own weakness. And you got to conquer that feeling, and you got to realize, no, I got to be aware. I can't I stop feeling, start thinking. And I got to think about what is my weakness, what is my issue, what can I do to make it better? That is so important so that you don't live in ignorance. The ignorance is I just don't want to think about it. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Yep. If I have a fight with somebody and that happened, whenever I have a fight with somebody, I would say, no, we're not letting it go. We're going to continue this. Why? Because I know that it's dangerous. If I want to give up and let it go, and then what happens? Then the devil will use it again because I forgot about the issues I'm supposed to fix. So you need to be aware. The second thing is you don't listen to, uh, to her. You don't listen to Delilah. Delilah, you listen to God. Look at uh, verse 15 and 16. Uh, Samson, he just kept listening to the grief. Oh, you have a problem. Uh, this, that, that, that. You don't really love me. And that's all he heard. When grief happens, when problems happen, all you hear screaming at your ears is, you got to wake up four in the morning and you got to get ready for work. And, you know, work is so tough and difficult. And you know what? Guess what? I think pastor and the church are looking down on you on that one. And they don't understand what you're going through. And there's no way you have enough energy to read your Bible and pray. And shut up, Delilah. Amen. That's your problem. You're, you keep listening to the grief. You got to listen to God. You know what God says? No, you can do it, child. Come on, grab my hand. Amen. Rely on me. Yeah. Why don't you pray to me? Yeah. Let's sing a hymn together. Oh, I don't feel like it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Bear within my heart rings a melody. Yeah. Come on. Let's do it. 
You need to listen to God. You need to read His Word. You need to pray. You need to come to church to hear preaching that will finally make you aware. Amen. You need to listen to God. You can't listen to Delilah. Amen. You know why some of you came to church today? You don't want to be in grief, sitting in your place. You want to come to church and finally get your mind on God to help you live and survive the week. Amen. Another thing, don't believe Delilah on how bad the grief is. You need to believe in God. Amen. You know, see, that's the problem. Samson was so vexed unto death at verse 15 and 16. This is Superman. How can he be so vexed to death by a woman? A woman that was far weaker than him. You know, uh, being a Superman guy. You know why? Because Superman had a weak spot. He believed her. You don't really love me. You don't really love me. If you really love me, you would tell me everything, but you didn't tell me every single detail. And because of that grief ringing in your ears that you're too tired or you can't do this, you are not strong enough to do this. No, you, uh, you don't have the ability. You know, people will understand why you're always weak, so let it go. And no, you can't believe the grief. You got to deny the grief and you got to believe in God instead. And God the Holy Spirit told you that, hey, you know you need to read the word. You need to pray. You need to come to church. You need to try to win a soul. You know you can overcome this issue. You know you can schedule better. You know you have to cut off on something in your fleshly time that you wasted time on. And you need to listen to God. Amen. And when you do that, you overcome the weakness. My third point is verse 19. Verse 19. The drained Superman. The drained Superman at verse 19. Now, if you look at that passage, notice that when she is cutting off his strength, when Delilah's cutting his hair, cutting off his strength, that the Bible interestingly words that as afflict him. In other words, she's draining the energy from him. This is, this is what you want to hear. You want to hear this? You want to get ready for this one. How we know you overcame your weakness is when the affliction happens and then you prove to God you passed the test. Can I repeat that again? Your weakness is exposed. It's revealed during the suffering, during the affliction. Because when the affliction happens right over here, then your weaknesses are start to be revealed. The one Things that you're more prone to sinning. Things that you're prone to be more fleshly in. Things that you're prone to be worry about more. Things that you're prone to be more discouraged about more. Things that you're not strong enough in. See, the weaknesses is revealed during affliction. That is so important. Uh, that's why God is giving you suffering and trials. You know why? There are weaknesses you don't know about. And God wants you to know about them and say, hey, this is what you need to work on more. You thought you were strong enough, didn't you? But you weren't that strong, Samson, right? You thought that, for example, oh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll come to church faithfully, study the Bible, and I want to grow in the Lord. I can't imagine a person who won't come to church here anymore. There are some people who said that, and uh, the trial happens, and guess what happens? You don't come to church anymore. Why? Oh, it could be because of busyness. It could be because of a church fight. It could be an unhealthy relationship that you had somewhere where the person influenced you not to come, etc. See, the weak spot reveals that you're not actually that strong or spiritual that you thought you were. That's why you need, that's why God does suffering and problems, not because like you deserve it, it's because out of mercy and grace. It's to show you the weak spots that you need to clean off. That it, some of the things that are even sinful that you never thought of before. That you're prone to sinning. And God does this to show you that where I am weak, then am I strong as 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So then, it's hard though. While the affliction happens, it's hard to overcome that weakness, right? Perhaps a great example is your weakness is self-control. But you never realize that until in the middle of the moment while you're street preaching, for example. And when you're street preaching, you're being more bold, more up front with people. Amen. And then all of a sudden, the attack happened where the devil sends some jerk right in front of your face who wants to catch you spitting at him by accident. And then they'll just shut down street preaching for COVID, etc. 
So maybe a, an example like that, and then it's at that moment that you want to burst out in anger at that person, lash out. And that's when you need to hold yourself, and the devil knew that was your weakness, lack of self-control. And because the devil knew that, that, he set that thing up for you where you would lose control. The affliction's happening, right? The affliction, the trial, the test is happening at that moment where let's see if you're gonna, your weakness will be exposed or you overcome the weakness. And this person's weakness was lack of self-control. But the person thought he had enough self-control. The person thought he just has to be more bold. That was his issue. But then when the trial and the actual test happened, the real weakness was shown where, no, it's not that you need to be more bold. You need to have more self-control. And at that moment, the devil is trying and the Lord is trying. And then your weakness is about to get exposed. What can you do at that moment? At that very moment and that very instance when all your senses and your fleshly feelings come out, what can you do to hold back the weakness? The first thing you need to do is you need to watch. The Bible says Matthew 27 gave you the answer. Watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. See, you are not looking at your weak areas because you didn't watch. If you watched, then you would have known before that incident happened in street preaching where you lack self-control that I have this issue. So when the person comes up to me, I need to be ready. You don't even think that. You need to be watchful. And that verse says pray. You didn't even pray about your weak area. Lord, I know that I have a self-control issue at that moment in street preaching, so I surrender that to you and pray you'll please Protect me, help me to hold myself back. Amen. And then the last thing you need to do is you need to fight it. Yeah. You need to fight it. The verse says in Ephesians chapter 6 that uh, we have to live in warfare, fighting. The, the reason why you fall into your weakness again is because you're not resisting it. Why? Because when you're feeling something, it's hard to resist. You just want to go by how you feel. And a great example is that person who lacks self-control. And he's just going by feeling and he's not even thinking and then he just wants to say the word. You need to resist that. Well, why am I not resisting it? Well, one, you didn't watch. Second, you didn't pray. Mm -hmm. And if you did these two things, you would catch yourself. But then the third thing is you're not fighting it. You don't want to fight. You know what you want to do? You want to go by the flow with how your flesh feels. And that's your weakness. Hey. Did that make just any sense or some of you are lost? Sure. I hope you're opening your eyes. This is a complicated sermon, so I hope that you're getting it. But see, the Lord is showing you your weakness, that you are truly fleshly, not spiritual. And then you need, you need to resist that. Why couldn't you resist it before? Because deep down inside your heart... You don't like anything uncomfortable to you. That's the key. Yeah. The key is, are you willing to embrace that pain? Are you willing to embrace that stress, that hardship, that uncomfortable feeling you're going through right now? At that moment when your senses feel it and you resist it, it's so uncomfortable, but you need to embrace that uncomfortable feeling and do it. Because if you don't do that, then guess what? You did not even go to the basic of basics where God says your body is a living sacrifice at Romans 12. Romans 12, God says that you have to embrace discomfort, uncomfortable feelings during sacrifice. Your body has to do that. Good sermon. My fourth point, my last point, the default Superman, the default Superman. And let me wrap it up. Thank you. It was, I just had to explain. I spent a lot of time explaining so you can understand. So let me wrap this up quickly. The default Superman at verse 20. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. The problem with Superman here is that uh, if you look up the word default, it's a person that failed to do something. So Samson definitely failed in his part doing his spiritual duty for the Lord. That's why he fell. But I also find another interesting word, what default means. It means to go by what you're used to doing by default, the normal rot routine that you're used to doing. Mm -hmm. Samson was thinking by default, 
I have the power and the strength. I can overcome these Philistines. But that was his weak spot. You know what's your weak spot? Your weak spot is you're looking at your good points, not your bad points. You're looking at your strengths, not your weaknesses. And that's why you overlook and you're not paying attention to your weak spot right now. You know why? Because you're only looking at your strengths. See? Oh, I went to church. I prayed. I read the Bible. And then uh, I'm not committing these sins. And I'm living for the Lord. And uh, I'm doing a fruitful thing, work for Christ. But when you focus on these things, then what happens is you think that you're right with God. And that's dangerous. When you think that you're right with God, and the devil will try to pull up some weakness in you, where that's why one thing I, uh, that's a problem with pastors, and I think pastors should ask themselves is, uh, with Bible-believing pastors, they study so much doctrine. That's a great thing, and that's a beautiful thing. But now the Lord's testing them during COVID-19. I wonder if you can stand united together as different convictions start to pop out. And let's see how much Bible you know would help you with that one. And then pastors think that because the way they pastor their church and their ministry and how the Lord bless them, and they're looking at their strengths over here, they're not looking at their weakness. And because they're not looking at their weakness, the devil takes that to his advantage during COVID-19, where this Bible-believing pastor and this other Bible-believing pastor who runs different ways of running ministries are in conflict. How about that? But that's a good example, even with the greatest type of person you can think of. One of the greatest type of spiritual people you can think of is pastors. That's how the devil can use it. And that's how the devil's using you, is you're looking at your strengths. And then you concentrate on the strengths. And because of that, you deceive yourself thinking that you're spiritual, you're right, right with God, and you don't even remember your weakness. And that was lack of grace. That was lack of self-control. That was, you're more prone to being angry, you're more prone to being lazy, you're more prone to being negligent, you're more prone, all in all, in selfish. Amen. You're just selfish, thinking about yourself. By default, you fall into your weaknesses because you think about your strengths. Well, I know, Pastor, you mentioned this and this and this, and some of the uh, brethren here gave me advice on conquering sin here, here, and here. But I have my own way to do things. So let me do it this way to conquer my temptations. That's why you keep falling into your weak spots. That's what happened with addicts, unfortunately. They hear so much good advice from people, and then, uh, but they have their own way of handling their addictions. Yeah. And guess what? They're still stuck in it. Yeah. Watch your temptations. You know why you keep falling into the same temptation? You're not listening to good advice. Because you're not acknowledging your weakness that you're truly weak on. And that you need to do this method to overcome your addiction. Instead, you're thinking about your strength. If I do this, it should be fine. And I can overcome my weakness. No, you know that you don't. Another thing is that you don't listen to God. That's the bottom line. You don't listen to God. That's why you concentrate on your weak. You concentrate on your strength, not your weakness. Wow. Because when uh, you hear, for a great example is preaching. In preaching. Uh, you hear great preaching, and then the pastor says something. If he didn't by now, then I don't know what's going on, all right? But he must have said something by now after 10 years that made you feel very disagreeable, made you feel very uncomfortable, and made you say, no, I think it's a different way. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that will happen, all right? That should happen one day. But the thing is, is that in that preaching, you start to think, no, no, you're wrong about that way pastor and then the devil sees that and says aha and I can use that as your weak spot because you think you're strong you think you're more spiritual and you're more right than the pastor during that preaching and then because of that you keep falling into your weak spot same thing with kids listening to their parents we live in a day and age where it's so rebellious and independent that when parents are trying to give good advice to their children that the children they don't obey they don't listen why because, oh, i got to follow my heart, i got to think independently, blah, 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 and stuff like that. You better watch out for that because you're relying on your own strength. You think you're so right. And then years later on, 20 years later down the road, you're still working at a job that's not ideal. And then you're still struggling and you're living in your mommy's garage or basement, 40 years old. Why? Because you're not listening. You're not listening. you got to listen. Same thing uh, with young preachers, with older preachers. 
you know, I can. Uh, you don't think that I can't find problems with older preachers? I mean, with I mean, studying all that knowledge, it's so easy to do that. But I have to learn. I can't focus on my strength. I have to focus on my weakness. And when I listen to that older preacher's advice, that's trying to point out my weak area. I need to say, I need to think, is that my weak area? But if I keep focusing on my strength, when the preacher's trying to point out my weakness, then I use my strength to put the fault at the older preacher. No, you're wrong about this, this, this. Am I making any sense? You don't have any idea how much time you've wasted doing these things, serving the Lord. Can you imagine? I guarantee you that there are so many pastors who have huge ministry, who are King James only too, independent fundamental Baptist, and they have huge empires, but they don't realize how much time they've wasted building great college campuses, and I have thousands of people in my church, bus ministries just flowing, and et cetera, et cetera, but they don't realize how much time they've wasted in their service to the Lord. You might say, how so? Because you can have a big ministry and be doctrinally wrong. You can have a huge ministry and lack grace with other people. You can have a huge ministry and be a softy going by politics, by people's whims, rather than being non-compromising. See, they're not looking at their weakness. They're looking at their strengths. Look how much God blessed me, so I must be right with God. That's Samson. Look at how many times I conquered 100, 200, 1,000 Philistines. I should be able to overcome them. You know what that verse says? He wist, That last part is scary. He wist not that the Lord was departed from him. You, some of you have no idea that... That despite of how much you've done your service for the Lord in your strengths, because of that weakness, you have no idea that small little weakness, just that hair, right? Like Samson being cut out, that God departed from you a long time ago. Is God really with you, my friend? Is God really with this church today? Some of you want to get on the altar now. My last point. My last point. So, in this last point about the default Superman, I want to close out with this one, is that in verse 21 and 22, the sad thing people aren't thinking about at verse 21, 22, <coughs> is that Samson, he got his strength cut out because it was targeting his weakness. Not his strength, they're targeting his weakness. His hair was cut out. His hair was cut out and he's blind. They blinded his eyes and he's in the mill. Grinding, 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 blind. And they are laughing at him, mocking at him. But they have, but little did they realize that God said, if you read that passage, it says the hair began to grow, however. His strength was returning. Some of you have no idea. You know what's sad? A lot of you right now perhaps are grinding in the mill, blind, disregarding your weakness, blind to your weakness. And you're grinding through a problem a situation that you're going through, not realizing your own weakness that you should have fixed so that you can overcome the problem. And then you're grinding while the enemy is laughing at you. He's laughing at you right now, laughing at you on uh, your pride, your self-righteousness in the middle of while serving the Lord, in the middle of coming to church, laughing at you. He's laughing at this church like, oh, look at that. So you can do, you're doing all these strengths but you're not looking at your weakness and I'm laughing at you that I caught you in. And here you're going through a problem and some of you are still grinding through that problem right now. Blind while the enemy's laughing at you. You have no idea, my friend, that deep down inside there's something small in there and that's the Holy Spirit and he's the greatest strength that you have. Samson with that small little hair, I mean, it's where his power is growing and he can return against his enemies. Guess what Samson did? He took opportunity of that. He says, I have the power back. I'm going to conquer my enemies, and he did. But some of you are not, not doing what Samson's doing. Samson, he took opportunity to conquer his Philistines. You've got your Philistines, but you're not taking opportunity of the strength God has given to you. Instead, you're just still being blind like Samson was, grinding in the mill, going through your problem. Oh, because of this grief. Oh, because of this problem. And, Oh, well, I just have to go through this pain and problem and blah, blah, blah. And you just disregard it, blind to your weakness. I urge you today, don't let the enemy mock at you anymore through your misery right now. 
Get right with God and then be like Samson. Grab that strength that you have. Every head bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. Did the Lord deal with your heart on your weak spots that you need to see and you need to surrender to the Lord and that you need to repent? It's so easy to disregard our weaknesses and to concentrate on our strengths. You might be the most faithful church member here. Be the first one to set the set up the chairs, the person who sets up the tech, the person who helps out with the music, the person who just encourages and prays for the pastor. But your problem is, is that you're only looking at your strength. You're not looking at your weakness. And you need to look at your weakness now. Can I encourage you to look at your weakness right now? Let me help you. Let me help you. Can you honestly say you did not sin today? Can you honestly say that? You might say, no, pastor. Then you need to figure that out why. You need to start figuring out why, why you can't say that. Is it because of your pride, maybe? Maybe because of out of pride? Is it because there is truly something in your heart life and thought life that's not right? Maybe you're not as spiritual as you should? Start looking at your weakness. And then I want to help you out here. See if that weakness is connected to your current problem you're going through. See if that weakness is connected to the attacks Satan keeps throwing at you. And you need to discover that. If you finally discovered it, cover that under the blood. And get that right with the Lord. Because if you don't, you're still grinding at that mill. With the enemy plucking out your eyes, mocking you. And here you are just blindly grinding at the mill over and over, round and round and round you go with the devil laughing at you. Don't be that person. Open your eyes and realize there is a hidden strength. That hair is growing longer. That the Holy Spirit is using you again. And you need to grab that strength and conquer the weak. Conquer that weakness. But you're not taking action. You need to take action through the blood. Because we're very late, and I know people want to spend time praying, I unfortunately have to close it off, so let me pray. God, my Father, I pray that people here have seriously contemplated on their weaknesses, their issues. I pray that this has not closed it off immediately for some of these people, that some of these people will be able to continue their altar call with you, take time to contemplate. Uh, when they go back home, even though I have to officially close off altar here, I pray that inside their hearts it's not closed, that they'll continue it when they go back home. Weakness will be conquered through the blood of Jesus Christ, and we can become strong. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.